Out-of-body mystical experiences are surprisingly common. A third of people who have been near death report experiencing such an event. This kind of experience typically involves feelings of peacefulness, out-of-body detachment, seeing a bright light, and moving through a tunnel. Believers and people of faith say that this is proof of an afterlife and is evidence of a God that has a plan for our souls upon death. Even scientists say that in order to prove the existence of an afterlife, someone would have to return from the dead to tell us what happened. Doesn't this near-death experience then provide proof of an afterlife? Or can this phenomenon be explained through testing and science? The mystery of near-death experiences coming up right now. To understand this from a scientific perspective, let's look more closely at this near-death phenomenon. First, let's break down the detailed experiences that the one-third of people I talked about at the beginning report having. First, people's near-death experience seems to be almost universally positive, with people reporting feelings of peace, comfort, and reduced anxiety. Second, culture seems to influence what people experience. American Christians claim to have met Jesus. Indian Hindus report meeting Yamraj, King of the Dead. What does science have to say about this? A recent scientific study by neuroscientists Blanky, Favor, and Dieges concluded that the disembodied experience is due to disturbances in a part of the brain called the temporal parietal cortex. This is the part of the brain that gives us a sense of self and body. Electromagnetic stimulation of this area has been demonstrated to produce out-of-body experiences. These researchers have presented an entire network of brain activities that can account for the mechanism of spiritual out-of-body mystical experiences. They propose that different interactions between different brain regions produce different experiences. For example, a brain where the left hemisphere is more stimulated results in altered sense of time and impressions of flying. When the right hemisphere is more stimulated, people feel like they're communicating with spirits and hearing voices. So their proposed mechanisms seem to explain many of the actual experiences people have. What about people that see tunnels and a bright light at the end of the tunnel? The late Carl Sagan, famous astrophysicist, suggested that death can produce a kind of remembrance of birth syndrome. A feeling of being in a tunnel and seeing a bright light at the end of the tunnel is not unlike what a baby might experience as it is being born. And perhaps death can create this connection with latent memories of one's birth, he argued. When the human body is dying, researchers have found that the body releases endorphins. These are the natural feel-good drugs that the body produces typically in times of intense physical pain or suffering. The body does this naturally to suppress pain. Long-distance runners have described this as a runner's high, for example. Researchers theorize that when someone is dying, it is these same endorphins that produce a sensation of peacefulness and contentment, not unlike what people who have undergone near-death experiences actually report. When a dying person is in the hospital and is under anesthesia, this can also produce feelings of being out of the body. Anesthetics such as ketamine can do this, and people under this anesthetic have reported having near-death type of experiences. But it is in fact just a side effect of this drug. That's why it's a common club drug. According to a study by Rick Strassman, a professor of psychiatry at the University of New Mexico, which was done from 1990 to 1995, he found that people had near-death and mystical experiences following injections of NN dimethyltryptamine or DMT. DMT is a powerful psychedelic drug that is also known as the spirit molecule. Strassman's studies showed that more than half the people injected with this drug had religious experiences, typically interacting with non-human beings in a disembodied state. Strassman says that at near death, the body produces natural DMT in the pineal gland. This is yet another reason that people can have out-of-body experiences at death or close to death. Scientific explanations of near-death experiences can show how ischemia or lack of oxygen to the brain can result in a state of feeling depersonalization, where the mind can feel that it is separate from the body. This may be a way our brains deal with pain during death or high stress. By making the body as not one's own, one may not feel the physical pain that the body is going through. So this can manifest as a feeling of not being able to identify your body as being you. A feeling of disembodiment can result. The most widespread explanation though 
for near-death experiences is the dying brain hypothesis. This theory proposes that as cells in the brain begin to die, they start firing randomly, kind of like a last gasp. This can cause hallucinations which manifest as near-death experiences. Under extreme stress or crisis, brain cells can die, which would explain some of the stories that survivors of severe crisis do actually report. Some scientists argue that these scientific explanations don't explain the full range of experiences that people have, so they say that we cannot conclude that all out-of-body experiences have a scientific explanation. I say that since the human brain has 100 billion cells with over 1,000 trillion connections, no two people probably have the exact same experience. But there's enough science and enough research to explain how something very similar, even if it is not exact, can happen. And when we have rational explanations, we need to give them due consideration. I wonder how many people prefer to hold on to false beliefs, even in the face of overwhelming evidence, because it may dash their spiritual hopes of a life after death, when science seems to clearly tell us nothing like that exists.